Hello, everybody, and welcome to my talk. My name is Peter Hunt. I'm a software engineer for Red Hat. I primarily work on Cryo for OpenShift, but I also work on Kanmon and Podman and other container-related technologies. Today, we're going to talk about Cryo, specifically the journey in Cryo in dropping the pause container. Before we get into the nitty gritty about what a pause container is, we got to first talk about what uh, a little bit about Kubernetes background. So to get on the same page, let's talk about what a pod is. You can think about a pod like a group of, uh, it's, it's like a logical host. It's a group of containers, pretty much. They share some namespaces and some storage and they're kind of like a uh, you know, server. So you may have a web server container inside of it and maybe a logging sidecar and maybe some other containers that you know talk, uh, warm up the cache maybe. Uh, now that we have a uh, understanding of what a pod is, let's talk a little bit about the pause or the infra container. So what is the pause? If you uh, run Docker and you've ever run Docker PS on your Kubernetes node, you may notice a mysterious pause container. In the bottom of this, uh, this picture, we have pause 3.2. And the pause container sits and pauses. It really doesn't do very much more than that. Uh, except for at the end of its life. And we'll talk more about what the pause does. The original, the idea of the pause is to hold the pod level namespaces uh, and share them with other containers inside of the pod. Uh, and it's contained within the pod C group. It's often referred to as the pod infra container. So in this talk, we're mostly going to call it pause, but you may see some uh, instances of it being called an infra container. For some history of Kubernetes pods, uh, in the beginning, there was just Docker. And, Do uh, and uh, this was you know, well before CRI or Rocket or other runtimes were uh, uh, able to go under Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes needed a way to give each pod an IP address. How would one do that in Docker? The way that they figured it out was they started a container. And then they had they jumped into the network namespace of that container and assigned it an IP. Then they started other containers uh, joining that network namespace of the first container, and then the containers had the assigned IP. And that's how the pause container came to be. As such, it was originally called the net container because it only held the network namespace, but eventually other namespaces were added to it. The first one being IPC, at which point it was named the infra container in the code base. Eventually, the PID namespace sharing was added. Uh, and then the pauses job came a little bit more involved. Uh, in addition to just holding the namespaces, it is also by being PID1 in the, the pod level PID namespace, it's responsible for reaping processes uh, in the pod. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. So now that we know what the pause is, why would we drop it? We've been using this forever. The first reason is it uses up space for the binary, the container, and the image. So uh, per node, the image is it's pretty small, 600 kilobytes, not bad. Uh, not really anything anyone would sweat. Uh, however, the amount of memory that it has per pod is not great. I mean, one meg per pod is really not bad. Kubernetes nodes typically cap at around 250 uh, pods, which means that's 250 megs. That's barely anything in the grand scheme of things. But that is a little bit of uh, space for your workloads. Another reason is it does take time to create, mount, and start the container. Uh, below, we have an example of uh, running it, uh, creating a pod with a pause container and without. Um, and these times don't look all that different. And I'm going to go into a little bit more of com performance comparison. And I ultimately know that there are really two things that a uh, pod creation request needs to do. It needs to somehow share the namespaces, uh, create the namespaces for sharing within the pod and set up the networking stack for the pod. So uh, this is with, by dropping the pause container, we're doing about you know, half of those things. Finally, there's some process management overhead. Uh, there's much more code in setup and cleanup, and you know we need to keep track of the pause container. Uh, 
notice here we have, uh, you know, we, we have a devoted conmon, which is a container monitor for our infra container to make sure that it's still alive or it hasn't been um killed. Um, and ultimately, no process means no process management. Uh, we don't have to worry about any of that. And the saved code is saved bugs as well. So how would we go about dropping the pause container if we needed to? What does the pause container really do? Uh, the first thing that you need to do is find a way to keep namespaces without an associated process. And luckily, Linux just supports this out of the box. We can bind mount namespaces. So in this first uh, line here, we have unshare dash dash net. And unshare means uh, create or point to uh, another namespace and jump into it. So unshare minus minus net means make me a new namespace and then put me right inside of it. And then that following command mount dash dash bind proc self ns net devar run net one. Uh, that's saying mount my personal namespace, which is the namespace we just created in the unshare command, mount proc self ns net to the specified location. And then in this terminal below, we can unshare inside of to that var run net one and then be inside of the namespace of the uh, pod or cre created by that uh, unshare command above. The second step, which is actually something that took me by surprise in, uh, uh, in implementing this feature is you need to apply the syscuddles in the pod. So Linux syscuddles are namespaced and we need to apply them at some point. So the time that you apply them is when you are inside of the pod, but uh, well, you are unshared inside of the namespace, but you have uh, yet to, um, you, you've unshared the name inside the namespace and you configure it then. Uh, some examples are like IP net, IP forward and message Mac. They're just ways to configure uh, some things inside of the namespaces. Finally, you need to take the namespaces that you've just created and pass it to the OCI runtime to when, so it can use them in creating the container. So on the left here, we have the old way of doing it where we used proc, uh, the proc entry for the pause container, proc 864303, and uh, took that, uh, that namespace and then passed it to the uh, runtime which then gave, uh, unshared the container inside of it and then uh, you know, had that container inside of the namespace. On the uh, other side, we have a created uh, path that uh, we passed down instead. So we have our unshared, our mounted uh, namespace path and we just pass it right to the runtime and the runtime takes care of actually configuring it for the new container inside of the pod. Now that we've, uh, so now that we know how, uh, let's get to introducing how we actually did it. And that is with a binary called pin and S, pronounced pin and S, not pins. Uh, and it currently lives inside of the cryo tree. It was inspired by the IP net and S commands, as well as uh, a container networking package that uh, is used heavily in CNI today. It's a C binary that's exec from cryo uh, and the reason we went with this rather than doing it in cryo natively is because uh, Go is kind of funky with how it configures namespaces. Uh, well, how like the runtime interacts with namespaces. Um, the runtime has the ability to jump through different namespaces at any time. Uh, you know, so uh, you need or an interrupt. Uh, you know, your process at any time. So you need to. Uh, lock the OS thread, do all of your namespace related uh, stuff, and then unlock it uh, to safely do that. And instead of doing that, we just decided to do it in C, where there's not a runtime mucking around with things, and there's more native support for unsharing and mounting. Cryo then takes the mounted namespace from PinNS and hands it to a container. And then, boom, we did it. Pause process dropped for the most part. The one case that we have to worry about still is the dreaded PID namespace. So remember the special responsibility that PID1 has inside of a private PID namespace. It's responsible for reaping uh, the children from the kernel's process table, basically calling wait PID so that the, uh, those uh, PIDs can then be uh, reused. If you don't do this, then there's an entry in the process table 
uh, but there's no associated process, and this is called a zomb zombified you know, process that no zombie antidote will fix. Uh, for this case, a pod level PID namespace, we actually keep the pods container. Now there's a couple of hacky workarounds we could do instead. Like what if we had the first process inside of the, uh, the first container inside of the pod be PID1 and made sure that that PID1 always had the uh, capability to reap the children of the, uh, you know, base. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we would still need to ensure ordering. So if there was another container that jumped in beforehand, then that would be PID1 and then there would be zombies. And ultimately, this is what, you know, our pause container already does. We already reap uh, the, you know, children inside of the private PID namespace, uh, inside of the pod level PID namespace. And we've ensured ordering with uh, the pause container. Uh, luckily, this is not that much of a loss because most uh, pods have a container level PID namespace instead of pod level. So uh, we can still drop the infra container and not worry about sharing a private PID namespace, uh, pod level PID namespace, and only use a POS container for cases where we have a pod level PID namespace. So given that, let's talk a little bit about Crow's journey uh, through different options in configuring sandboxes, which is an analogous for pods, and um, you know, having uh, getting to the dropped in first. So we started off configuring pods with namespaces and proc. We saw uh, the we have straw the sing, string before proc pid ns net or whatever. Um, and that's how we originally did it uh, with a pause container. Then a little bit uh, down the line, Kata containers needed a way to pre-configure the network namespace before starting the pause container so that the VM had a running network uh, to start up with. And so an option was introduced, manage network NS lifecycle, which used the container networking package and natively did it all in Go to pin the namespace. And this made it for Cryo 1.0. For security, uh, we, uh, move, we're we moving towards uh, managing all of the NS lifecycle. So um, uh, about a year ago, we had a CVE where an interaction between the kernel um killer and Kanmon, our container monitor, and PID wrap caused sometimes, sometimes caused an unprivileged container to be able to uh, jump onto the network namespace of a host pro of the host, which could allow for the host to have the host name change or something like that, which is very bad. Um, that has been patched in a couple of different ways, and we've nearly fully mitigated that. And the final nail on the coffin for that vulnerability is managing NS lifecycle, which is now the default option. Um, managing NS lifecycle is uh, what introduced the pin NS binary and allowed us to uh, pin all of the pod level namespaces, but without having yet dropped the pause container. And then finally for uh, performance, we moved on to drop the pause container um, and that's corresponds to the drop infra option, which is slated to be introduced in cryo 119. So given that, let's talk a little bit about the future. So yeah, in experimental support, for the pause container, uh, dropping the pause container is targeted for Cryo 119. Um, next, then after that, we uh, plan on having Podman pods also use pin and S to configure the namespaces, um, as it currently also uses a uh, infra container. And then eventually, we want pin namespaces and dropped pods to be the default, so that we uh, get rid of the pause container entirely unless we absolutely need it in the PID namespace case. So let's uh, do a quick demo. So here we have our, um, our local cluster running, and this is just has a uh, cryo. And we're going to start off with um, not managing the namespace lifecycle and not dropping the pause container. So uh, here we have our two containers, hello one and hello two, uh, our two pods, and they're pretty much the same uh, except for their name. And basically what they're gonna be doing is uh, an Alpine container that runs top, very simple. So we're gonna start off by running kubectl apply 
a hello pod. Oop. Now we have a hello pod. So uh, let's look at it in cry cuddle. Cuddle pods. So here we have the container ID for this hello pod. Let's look at the pause uh, process itself. So we can do a, a run C list, yes, just A. And notice here we have F3C, run C list, spaces. So here we have the namespaces that we asked run C to use for this pod. So notice it has a private hid and mount namespace, but we passed down uh, the, the path for the net IPC and UTS namespace of the infra container. So look at this PID. It matches the 285, 264 of our pause process because we're taking the entry in the proc uh, table for the uh, namespace, the net, the, all the namespaces of the pause container and passing it down to run C. Now let us try it with dropping infra equals true. So now we're going to create we have hello to created. I cut all bonds. I cut all yes minus a. And look at this. This is our uh, run C list. And notice here, we did the same thing as before, except instead of passing the uh, path that had the proc entry, we're passing uh, the namespaces that pin in us unshared, uh, configured the syscuddles, and then bind mounted to the specified location. Cryo took that location and then passed it down to run C. And now we have a pod running without a uh, PID namespace, uh, without a pause container. So that is it for the demo. Let's talk a little bit about performance comparison, a moment of truth. So in this, here's a little script that we used to test how well the performance increased, uh, how much better the performance is when dropping the pause container. Um, all we're doing is in parallel, we're running 100 unique pods, waiting until that's done, and then removing all of those pods uh, and taking the time for that operation. And we did it uh, 10 times each for uh, dropped and not dropped uh, pause container and uh, use a tool called multi-time to aggregate the data and make the comparison. So, and here's the data that we got. Uh, in the drop pause case, we have about a little bit less or a little bit more than half of uh, the real time as when we keep the pause. Now there's a couple of caveats here. Number one, notice how the user insists time is about the same. And usually those are actually the uh, meaningful metrics for the amount of time a process takes because they don't uh, because the real time has the uh, noise of kernel interrupts and uh, you know other operate other things that are happening on, uh, on the system. Uh, but unfortunately, the way that CryCuddle works, it makes a request off to Cryo. Cryo does all the work, and then Cryo returns a response. So none of the actual work is being um, of the of the pod creation and removal is being uh, attributed to the real time of the CryCuddle process. Okay, well, so that means the uh, you know there's a little bit of noise, and these numbers aren't precise. But what we can take away is that you know we're doing a many fewer things when we're not actually creating uh, we're not creating the rootfs and then uh, running the container and then having Kanban listening to the container and then waiting for Kanban to have be listening to the container and then you know we're doing none of that all we're doing is you know bind mounting a couple of uh, unsharing bind mounting and then uh, going on with our network uh, setup so this is uh, much better um, and we like that and this is not even accounting for the amount of time that we are uh, we took uh, the amount of code savings that we have with all the complexity of doing all of the pause container related things. And it's also not accounting for uh, the small but notable amount of memory that we're saving by not having a pause container for every pod. So that is uh, the presentation. If you want to find out more, here's a couple of different links. You can also contact me. I'm at hair commander on most things. Um, 
if uh, thank you very much for coming. If you have any questions and are watching live, then feel free to ask them. If you're not live, then you can ping me on any of these things and I'd be happy to answer. I really appreciate you coming. And uh, are there any questions? Oh, um, so yes, please. Uh, questions in the chat. Um, I think, there was one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I think we had one question that you said you were going to ask. Can we read it for you, or are you just going to find it? Uh, I can. I can uh, find it. So the uh, the question was: Couldn't we just have Cryo create a PID namespace and put a process into that that it would later kill? And so I I uh, I hadn't thought about that. Um, prior to this, um, the, there's a couple of uh, things that may actually make it so that that doesn't save us very much. Um, so we still use um, the runtime spec generation for uh, keeping the uh, state of the pod so that we're, we're basically reusing all of the work we did before making a config JSON blob and for the pause container. Uh, even if we drop the pause container, and that's so that we can restore the pod. Um, that m I think we'd eventually like to move away from that, but that's what we're doing currently. So it wouldn't save uh, the spec generation step. We would still need to have some Kanban-like process because we need to be able to handle if somehow this pause process got killed somehow. Um, and if the pause so we, we'd probably still want someone listening to it or, you know, be able to catch a sick child. Um, and Go can't do that very well because of how Go handles uh, signals, which is uh, the runtime gobbles them up. Um, and finally, the um, in the Kata container case, we still need a pause container because, and I didn't mention this in the talk and I should have, but for Kata containers, the another VM based uh, runtimes, the pause container actually there's an annotation that is given to the pause container, and then as it's passed down to the runtime, the runtime actually creates a new VM for the pause container, and then later containers are injected into that VM. So we couldn't um, have we couldn't make uh, we couldn't be totally pauseless because we still need to handle that case. Um, so yeah, but, um, yeah, Mernal, I think the, uh, the, oh yeah, and then we need the, um, the, we would need that process to be able to do PID reaping, which is not too hard to do, but, um, yeah, it, it would basically be the equivalent amount of work with a little less of the overhead of OCI containers in general. Um, so it wouldn't add a whole lot. Um, so it, it wouldn't save us a ton uh, yet. Um, and there's a follow-up question. Uh, and does pause container handled shared C groups or is this done via cryo? Um, so the pause container used to uh, hold the namespace for the, uh, it, it used basically the namespaces for the, uh, the pod was uh, based on the the pause containers PID uh, proc entry uh, in regards to its PID, um, but now we don't use that anymore. We use pin ns, which just mounts the oh shared c okay sorry shared c group namespace. The question was does pause container handle shared c group namespace? And yeah, that's not shared in Kubernetes yet, uh, though we're working on getting that working for v uh, c groups v two. And pin and to support it. Yes. Are there any other questions? Uh, if not, then. If we don't have any other questions, I guess. Um... Folks can head over to the break uh, to the expo hall. If you click on the link, uh, 
to the left of your screen down there, um, you can go and meet other other attendees of the conference, or if you just want to take a break, the next talk is gonna start at um, three thirty. So we'll see you over there. Thank you so much, and great presentation, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, Beverly. Right. Bye, bye, everyone. Thanks for joining.